This is Unplugged, a series of conversations with creative minds from the design industry and beyond, hosted by H&H. Hi, thank how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for the invitation. So nice yes. to see you, Yoko. Yeah, it's been so long and thank you so much for doing this with us. Yes, I know. I mean, we usually meet during the Design Week in Milan or in Paris. Yeah. But since the COVID nineteen, we miss all those great chances. Yeah, but I know that you have been very busy in the past year, also. So today yeah. we will go through some of your latest projects. Hmm. Great. Thank so, you. So, so tell us where you are talking to us from today. So uh, I'm actually uh, in my studio uh, in Seoul, Korea, um, and especially even in Korea, I uh, live in a very traditional neighborhood called uh, North Village. Uh, it's a very um, special um, traditional village that is consisted with uh, old traditional Korean architecture. So if you visit uh, this neighborhood, you can still see the uh, old architecture and the alleyways and how uh, people used to live back in the days. And I actually moved into the studio uh, eight years ago and I'm using it as my residential space and also my office space. Oh, wow. So this is one of your very early projects of the studio. Back in yes, Korea, isn't it? it is, and it it's actually uh gave this house actually gave me a chance to, uh, really think about uh what I need to focus on as a designer, and uh what are uh, some issues that society is going through that I need to to work on as a designer. So, um, I think it was a very important uh, um, point for me as a designer to meet this old uh, uh, old artifact. Interesting. And is it always your goal or your mission to go back? Because I know you have a lot of experience abroad before. Mm-hmm coming back to Korea and start your own studio? Is it always your mission to try to bring Um, the Western experience and knowledge back to your own country? um, I mean, I always felt uh, the need to uh, earn things uh, from overseas and bring it back to where I am based and utilize what I have learned, but I really didn't have a, a manifesto as a designer to really work and rediscover the local values and traditional heritage. Uh, it actually uh, started when I moved into this neighborhood, uh, like I said, eight, eight years ago. And as I was living uh, in this neighborhood, I actually got to experience and see the very uh, rapid change that this city is going through. You no, know, Seoul is one of the, one of the mega cities, uh, and it has so many people. And we celebrate change. Uh, we celebrate evolution. And and since there's so it, the population is so dense, that um, change and development is a natural everyday uh, thing for us. So uh, within that uh, social wave. Uh, I've seen so many traditional and great things being uh, demolished and and seeing all these great things that we need to protect being disappearing and having um, and see everything just be gone in a second. So I wanted to really um, rethink about what we have and how we could uh, utilize that and how we could keep that in our culture and, and keep it as a very contemporary thing. Yeah, it's, I think it's one of the very interesting things about Korean culture and design. I think you treasure so much the traditions and, and the craftsmanship and, and the history of the country, but at the same time, you're very forward looking. It's very <gasps> innovative and it's very new. It's very futuristic in, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, you're like right on point. And I see that every day. There's this double message that people trying, people are sending out. I think it's because of this historical background that we have. 
uh, we uh, have this uh, great a long history of Joseon dynasty that we have developed but in the other side uh, going through uh, the Japanese occupation era and going through Korean War we lost so many of that so there is this one part that we want to uh, re uh, document and re archive and also um, rebuild uh, the tradition that we have. But in the other side, since we have lost so much and everything was bombed out and demolished so much, that there's this other side that we need to build and we need to uh, really have the economy developed uh, up to date. So I think so that's why you're seeing a very different side of Korea at the same time. And I find it very interesting that people always, especially a lot of the people actually um, ask designers uh, what their role is in developing things, but they ask you on how to preserve and how to rediscover tradition at the same time. Yeah, I think that that can the story can be told with one of your latest project. I just read about mm -hmm. it yesterday, actually on wallpaper. Mm -hmm. com is the yeah. Gongjo National Museum, isn't it? Do I yes. pronounce it uh -huh. correctly? <laughs> yes, very good. <laughs> yes, um, Gyeongju is a very uh, historical city. Uh, for Korea, uh, if I could give a reference, maybe it could be like a Kyoto for Japan and uh, maybe Nanjing for uh, China and um, maybe Xi'an for uh, China. So we always uh, reference this city as our heritage and where our tradition has actually started and, and where our culture really started to develop. So, uh, and there's treasures, so many treasures that's still being um, digged out literally from the ground uh, in, the, in, in the province of Gyeongju. So we have this great museum, a national museum placed in Gyeongju. And um, it was time to get remodeled. And I was very lucky to be part of this, uh, this great project. I think it's uh, every uh, designer's dream to actually participate in the museum project. And I think I was very lucky to, do, to be part of it. And I think especially lucky because uh, the museum was actually uh, temporarily closed due to the corona uh, pandemic. People weren't allowed to uh, visit uh, this museum. Um, so during, uh, and the museum actually wanted to use this time to remodel and reshape the museum. So I was very uh, lucky to get a chance to be part of it. And of course, uh, you know, uh, creating a beautiful space and uh, creating a beautiful museum is very important and it's an understatement, but I think it's even more important to, to send out a message so I always uh, tell my clients and I always tell uh, the people who's experiencing my space that a beautiful space is not just a goal. It's never a final goal, but beautiful space is a tool to, to make people uh, think about uh, what this space is trying to talk about and what this space is uh, trying to convince uh, and, and make the space as a platform to generate ideas and <clears throat> make a conversation and start conversations flowing. Yeah, and I think it's, it's also very, very nice and very encouraging that um, such a um, prestigious um, national museum will work with a young architect like you. I think, <laughs> I think in a lot of other countries, this kind of opportunity will go to I don't know, more established um, um, yes. studios. Mm -hmm. And I think, what, what do you want to communicate with the younger generations through your work? How, how do you want them to see or to, to, to mm -hmm. think of the history that you're well, trying to present? Yes, I think that's a, a very uh, <clears throat> important question that I always ask myself. Uh, I would never want to actually mimic uh, the old heritage or trying to reinvent uh, the heritage. But I think it's really important to look at the essence of things and the historical background and really bring those stories back to where we live and how we can communicate with us. So for instance, uh, this museum, I really wanted to uh, tell 
the people who, who, who tell the visitors that these old artifacts that was created between 3 to uh, 6 AD can still inspire the, a designer living the 21st century and can still uh, give us uh, messages and still give us inspir inspiration in a very contemporary manner. So I spent a lot of time in this museum looking at uh, each artifact and trying to really uh, feel uh, the energy and the shape and the texture and how I could uh, use uh, these artifacts as a very, um, as an inspiration starting point to and translate that into a very contemporary language. So pretty much all the details uh, within the museum actually comes from this old, old artifact. And a lot of the people actually, visitors come to the museum actually find those things, find those links and actually uh, tells us that, oh, I, I saw this pattern uh, in this old ceramic and I thought it was very interesting. And, and you have actually used it in a very contemporary way to, 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 uh, to focus, to show the lighting effect on the wall of the museum. So it was all about uh, translating that into a very contemporary uh, language. And I really wanted to prove people that this artifacts not only just uh, belong in a glass cage, but it, it can still inspire me. Yeah, it's interesting. I would love to see the museum myself. So hopefully. <laughs> So, yes. <laughs> and we we talk we talk about uh we met in Paris last year I think mm. in in January during the ah. Design Week isn't it or the Art Week anyway but yeah. uh, I came to the launch of um the Goni the new collection yes. the Korean collection you designed it for mm. them and I think mm. that's also one of the very good example how to bring or how to present your tradition and um artisanship to to mm -hmm. the world. And yeah. I remember standing in front of the work. It's like a two sets of very beautifully uh, handcraft mm -hmm. uh, wallpapers. Mm -hmm. I feel mm -hmm. like I'm reading a story and I'm uh, like immersed into a world uh, of your culture. So you. can you can you tell can you tell us about all the motive and drawings and everything on the on the <clears throat> wallpaper design? Yes. Um... I'm pretty sure a lot of people already are, are very familiar with the brand de Gournay. Uh, it's one of the uh, most well-known hand-crafted uh, wallpaper manufacturer and also fabric. And they create very detail-oriented uh, and beautiful historical um, wallpapers that you could find. And the craftsmanship is just out of this world. I think it's the top quality things. And I think it's always nice to work with uh, brands that really appreciate what they do and and really uh, focus on what what they're trying to say and really have a, a great point on keeping the tradition going and they actually have a Chinese collection and a Japanese collection and they were thinking about uh, adding a Korean collection to it and I thought it was such a great chance to talk about Korean uh, traditional art and Korean traditional art is usually divided into two sectors, which is the royal painting and, and the other is the folk painting, which is for the uh, general mass. So, um, so that's why I wanted to introduce two uh, wall wallpaper. And one is the depiction of the old palace and the old, uh, gar uh, old palace's uh, garden. And the other uh, one is um, a very uh, daily life a painting which talks about how you uh, how you need to study and improve yourself and be a great person and that was the only way to climb up the social ladder so um, so just by uh, having two this this two uh, different wallpaper I think it gives people a general idea of how traditional Korean art divides and then you can go into farther inf informative aspects of Korean art so I think it's always uh, when it comes to design design is always a tool for me to um, give uh, information and and I always hope design becomes a platform for people to have conversation and talk about many different things. 
And I think it was very unusual for people to actually encounter these old Korean paintings. I mean, um, I'm pretty sure we have uh, seen Korean, uh, we have seen Chinese and Japanese paintings in museums and galleries, but uh, Korean uh, traditional paintings didn't have that much of exposure if you compare to Korea, uh, Chinese and Japanese uh, paintings. So I think that's why people were um, sort of more um, uh, fascinated with this new aesthetic. Like um, the folk painting that I've chosen is the name of the painting was uh, the art of learning. So book becomes the main subject and you find a stone next to these books which talks about um, almost like a stone that you're not even moving and really focusing on and the studies and really trying to improve yourself. So there's all these metaphors and really beautiful stories involved into it. And I think, and I seen so many uh, people who came to the, to the launch and who came to the exhibition trying to uh, want to learn more and go depth into the, the traditional painting of Korea. So I think it was a very um, successful project for, for me. Yes. Yeah, I think so too. As, as you say, it's a very, well, first of all, it's very beautiful design and very nicely crafted. So the, the first impression is already very, um, very strong. And, and as you say, mm -hmm. it's like a window for people to start learning or to be curious about the culture. Mm -hmm. I think it's like brilliant. Yes. idea. Thank you. And sometimes we don't uh, change too much of the traditional things, you know, sometimes uh, just the way it is seems so beautiful. So for like the royal paintings, we just change the uh, perspective of the drawing. The traditional uh, royal palace architecture drawings are always a bird eye view. So you always look things from, from the sky and you get a general view. But, uh, but in order to make it more uh, contemporary, we have shifted the perspective from sky to a, a human's eye level, almost like um, from the Renaissance period, how everything changed from, from the sky to the people. So that kind of transition uh, is, is very slightly and a very uh, small gesture, but talks about how we could change these traditional um, artifacts and make it contemporary. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's amazing. And if we talk about art, I know you where you work very closely with Kujie Gallery mm -hmm. uh, based in Seoul, one of the most internationally recognized contemporary art galleries coming from Korea. So yeah. I, I, I noticed that you have recently developed a very interesting space concept with them to mm -hmm. uh, re, re, refurbish the, the space in Seoul into yeah. like a complex of art gallery and restaurants and, and mm -hmm. fitness center. So I think this is a, such a great concept. Can you tell us yeah. more about that? Uh -huh. Yes, a lot of people actually uh, questioned me, like, is it a gallery or is it a fitness center or is it a, is it a spa or is it a restaurant? But, but uh, when we started this business, we really, uh, when we started this project, we really wanted to show uh, a lifestyle that really knows how to enjoy art and a lifestyle that really knows how to live with art. So we wanted to sort of recreate uh, this collector's house uh, and a dining room and a fitness studio and even a, a spa that actually has art in it and really combine the meaning of the art and meaning of the space and and do a little experiment uh, how things could how things could combine and create a different meaning and create a, a very different atmosphere so it was a very fun project for me and um it was a very different project for me as well because the process was very uh, different since it was a gallery um my clients Gukja gallery they were focusing on art first. So even before even deciding how the space design will be, they will choose the art first. So for <laughs> the restaurant, they wanted to have Hegyu Yang's piece 
in it. And for the private room, they said, oh, we're gonna put Wu Fan Li's piece. So it was sort of um, a very interesting aspect for me to study the art and then really translate uh, the artist's uh, theories and artists' manifestos and thoughts and really trying to bring the atmosphere into a space. It was a very fun project. So. Great. Is it uh, opened completely? Everything is finished so people yes, can Yes, everything is fishing. finished. Um, and um, we've been having a really good feedback. We just uh, received the wallpaper designer world uh, through this <laughs> project. And you know, I'm always so fascinated with with art because um, you know, art always starts from ideas, and I, art always starts from a very uh, critical eye looking at the society, and and a, and a good good true will to benefit the society. And sometimes, uh, if you're in a if you're working a design project such a little time and such a little budget, sometimes you tend to forget about those uh, meaningful goals and just really focus on creating something beautiful. Um, but art always uh, reminds me that uh, beautiful um, is a very different concept. And, and sometimes you just have to let go of yourself of creating a beautiful space in order to create a true beautiful space. And you have to have a very uh, great meaning and a great uh, understated manifesto in order to create something that has truth in it. So I think uh, art always guides me in the right way and guides me to, to design something that is needed for the society. Great. I think this is a, a brilliant way of presenting art to the public, no matter if you're a collector or not, is a way to really pre um, uh, appreciate and to experience the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. And talking yeah. about doing doing different things, I think you always do very different things. And this, I think <laughs> that's what makes your work so interesting. And I remember, like, is it two years ago you start your own beauty brand? Yes, uh -huh. I uh, yeah. just launched uh, a skincare brand called ETH Library. And we've been getting a really great feedback uh, through the skincare, but, but even the skincare, it, it's a tool for me to talk about Korean traditional medicine and really talk about a lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. Uh, that we have accumulated for thousands of years. So it's, it's more than just selling a product, but it's really just introducing people the great things that we already have accomplished. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. Well, I have tried that, that myself, so I can yeah. tell you, <laughs> I can tell everyone <laughs> it is amazing. And just the experience, like the smell and the texture and also the design of the packaging and the whole mm -hmm. concept is, yeah, it's just so soothing and so comforting. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we, we don't even have a, a signage <laughs> in our store, <laughs> but people still recognize uh, our brand and come to the store. Mm, I think the design and the, and the scent and even the lighting and the music, I think every, everything just becomes a, a, a one voice and, and people can recognize our brand. I think that's the, such a um, fun side to it. So that's why I am so uh, compelled on creating experience and building brands. And, and after building this cosmetic brand, um, I've been focusing more on branding project. So, so this year uh, we are working with um, a very big, um, one of the retail giants in Korea, in Korea uh, that has numerous cafes and restaurants overseas as well. And we're rebranding uh, what they have. So it's gonna be not just space, but starting from naming, and, and their graphic quality and everything. So I think it's gonna be a fun year for us. 
Oh wow, that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing. <laughs> and I, I, I can tell that um also there will be another way of experiencing your design and, and your ideas in, in Seoul if mm -hmm. we can travel to the city this yeah. year. You you're creating a hotel project. You're having a hotel project, isn't it? Well, I'm actually uh having a spa project. Oh uh, okay. In, in Korea and that's also a branding project as well so we'll be involved in even creating products as well and just I have to think about all the ex small even details and all the experience that people will uh, will have in this space and I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, project and uh, through this project we're really uh, thinking about what a genuine Korea aesthetic is so not just um, mimicking things but we're trying to focus on a certain period in our history and a, and a certain aesthetic and we're trying to uh, really do a lot of extensive research on, on that and, and trying to come up with a new aesthetic that we can offer to the contemporary society Wow, so you, you're making us very curious about <laughs> the future of your work. And the, I can't wait to invite you to the spa yeah, when it's that's, ready. There's more reason to go to Seoul now, <laughs> even <laughs> more. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so thank you so much, Theo, for today. I think we have a very good um, introduction and understanding of your work and looking forward to see all the new projects. You, you yes, just thank mentioned. you so much. Exciting. I will uh, definitely update you on our project and even the mm -hmm. processes and you can uh, see our final products and, and also spaces in our website. So please uh, come in and see our work. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Speak to you next time. Okay.